Hello, my name is Cynthia and welcome to my floss tube channel. If you love beautiful needlework, you like to talk about it, you like to see examples of it, and most importantly, if you hope to be inspired to create your own beautiful projects, you're in the right place. Hello, I'm happy to be here with you today to talk about my stitching and show you some of my projects that I've completed. It's been a really cold and gray day here in Fort Worth, Texas. It's Tuesday, December the 15th, 2020, and we are feeling really cozy and sitting around the Christmas tree trying to stay warm. We uh, had a little bit of a fender bender with my husband's car. He is um, waiting for insurance people, so we're kind of stranded here and just trying to stay cozy. I um, have a couple of projects that I wanted to share. The first being a finished project from last year for some of my newer um, subscribers. And I have kind of a cautionary tale with this piece. This was a um, freebie from Barbara Anna. I know I've showed it probably a couple of times, but it's been about a year and it was just a super fun stitch. It has some um, specialty stitches with the long, um, strings from the bird's mouth and I think that's it it's done on Ada I had dyed it a little bit darker it was kind of a bright Kelly green and it's still pretty bright but um, the hot glue I used last year was not sturdy enough to make it over a year's time apparently because this piece fell off of the magnets it was the magnets were still there but the um, fabric was not secure with just hot glue and it landed in a sink full of dirty dishes <laughs> and probably soaked for a good half hour so before my husband said is did you know your cross stitch is in this spaghetti pan and i was like oh my gosh so i scrubbed her with dawn dish soap and she's not quite as vibrant as she used to be the whites and her skin but um for the most part this is dmc i think that's some weak style works um red licorice is that right no louisiana hot sauce and it did not run thankfully but i'll have a tutorial a little bit later about how i do my finishing now and i always include e6000 glue it's a industrial kind of strength glue i think it's more for metal and jewelry but with metal hot glue just is not permanent so she um like I said, weathered the damage pretty well. I'll insert a picture here of how I keep her. I didn't want to move my Lori Mitchell L's. They're a little bit fragile, but I have two elves flanking her from Lori Mitchell that are just perfect. So I'll insert a picture of that here. And then I also had a spur of the moment, um, or not also, I had a spur of the moment stitch along um, that just was too hard to resist from Brenda Gervais. A lot of y'all have stitched the Mary, I always forget what it's called, Mary and Minty Sal from Brenda Gervais with the needle and thread. It was announced on um, Instagram is where I saw it that she was gonna be um, sharing a five day Sal. It went from Monday to Saturday and had um, five different parts. Is that correct? It's either four or five parts. I forget right now. But um, I jumped right on because I use a lot of candy kind of themed decorations, lots of peppermint. I've made some um, homemade candy canes and I just thought this would be perfect on my Santa table. I did um, all of my own colors. I used some of hers. I believe the 3777 is a... Um, Oh, and I've already put it up, is a um, dark terracotta actually by DMC, but that was the called for on the candy cane striping there. It's sort of just like kind of a rusty red, which is my favorite red anyway. So the candy cane and the um, peppermint kind of red is that dark terracotta. And then I used a um, bit of my Christmas red from my Aunt Ruth that I've used on all my Christmas pieces. And it has a lot of nice variegation there you can see. I did a piece of Ada that was a mystery. I actually got it from um, the big piece I ordered from, I think her name is Rita or Rita. can't remember, but I got a lady on Facebook to give me a giant piece of Ada and she threw in this scrap as a thank you for purchasing. 
So I think it's 16 count. I used some walnut shells and kind of darkened it up just a little bit. Wish it would have been even darker with that white peppermint, but I like it. And Rudolph is so cute. My kids love Rudolph. Another inspiration, Rudolph was the first piece that we were shown um, kind of as a teaser, like here's uh, kind of the direction it's gonna be in. We got the peppermint row on the bottom and Rudolph. And then we didn't know what was gonna be on his back, but that turned out so cute. And I had to do some French knots, which for me, I've seen people do a lot nicer job, but I tried to kind of give that popcorn some dimension with even some yellow kernels because I wanted it to look a little different, but you can't really tell unless you're right up on it. So, and this red stand came from Zoo Lily last summer. I've used it for Christmas or for um, Fourth of July Pineberry Lane piece, and I needed something to go on it. So I was gonna do another Pineberry, but this fit the bill perfectly. So super happy with how that turned out. And all I did to finish it was um, fold it under and tack it on in the corners. You can kind of see those stitches on this really dark red felt from Hobby Lobby. It's like super thick and it's not very um, usable for like applique or something, but as a backer for um, this piece, it was perfect. The, the piece came with these red clothespins, so it's super, easy i'm gonna look for another one in fact i want a bigger one they come in different sizes and you can get free shipping days on zulily so <laughs> this was like maybe eight dollars and i know it retails for a lot more so super fun gonna do another winter piece on this one and it will just stay out i also had a, a finish that was almost finished last time from the uh little house needlework series the abc's I have done all four now and I'm so proud because I actually finished an entire series. So it took me a while, but I got it done. And there are things that I would change now. Um, this was toward, you know, the beginning of some of my stitching adventures and I tried to make this um, fabric dark enough to show the white, but my alphabet is very ghosty. It's definitely visible, but you can tell it's a little bit hard to see. Hang on just a second. Okay, sorry, my window with my kids um, occupied is closing. This um, stand though, like I said, I've used for all four, or if I haven't said it, I've used it for all four, and I painted it white. It was originally red. I happen to remember this, this color in here is what color it was. I saw it when I had it laid out on the table. Um, and my mom had the same stand. She bought it in Oklahoma. <laughs> unbeknownst to me we have the same taste a lot of times so um i have a tutorial of how i laced this piece it kind of took me four times to figure out the easiest way to um finish this the most clean i think it fits the nicest it's the most well um edged on the corners it looks really good <laughs> and i'm like okay it took me four times to figure this out but I also left a little more space at the top because in the past when I finished this, I've centered it and then the bow kind of obscures the stitching. So I purposefully made it a little uneven where now the stitching is right where I want it and it's not covered up by the bow. And I didn't do a giant bow necessarily, but I really enjoyed that. Um, snowflake I found from Joann's. I showed the tag in the in the little tutorial and I was going to paint it white, but I actually like the way that it's edged with a little bit of um, dark stain. And so I felt like it really worked perfectly with that burlap. And I used just a little bit of the garnet ribbon because the red I used was cayenne um, from Weeks Dye Works. And is it from Weeks or Classic Color Works? I think it's Weeks. It is kind of a rusty red and I'm not sure I would have picked that if I had done it this year, but it still looks good. It almost looks kind of Scandinavian with that blue and red and white, I thought. So really like the way that turned out and I will insert the video of how I finished that here.
Okay, I wanted to show you some of the things I had worked on. With the finishes that I had done, I didn't have a lot of whips. I don't have any finishes. I usually finish things right away, so all I have are those two FFOs, but I've worked just a little bit on this Barbara Anna Designs, the Santa Dove and the Key. I intend to get this done hopefully before Christmas, but I'll only work on it another week or so. And if I don't get it finished, I'll probably put it away. But here is the Sea Lily fabric from Witchelt that I'm using. And I tried a little bit of that same red as Brenda Gervais. Uh, Choice, that's how I had it, the 3777, a really pretty dark red. I like the way it works on this, um, this linen. And I used uh, 33... 65 no i used the white silk that i talked about last time i used the natural dinky dye silk and i ended up having to change the color she had um charted a dark kind of gray for his wing and it was too much of a contrast so that's 33 38 66 the one that's just right above winter white and i think that's going to work for the the contrast on the dove but i need to get the house done it's done in that same color that light mocha it's not as bright as i first thought it's almost kind of like a tan. See his wing and the house are the same. So I really want to get back to this. I've been, like I said, a little distracted from um, my plans by the Mary Minty cell. Very happy to have been a part of that. That was fun to stitch along and to get that done in five days. She basically broke it up so that we were able to accomplish that. So that was a lot of fun. And I'm going to put these up as I go so I don't have quite a mess. Hang on a second. Okay, the next whip I wanted to show was my freebie from Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting. It is a little Santa mug, and I'll just kind of flash it because I'd encourage you to go check out her blog. Melissa has a beautiful decor style. And, oh, I have a needle that's hanging out here. I hope it, oh, no, it's up top. Okay, <laughs> this is where I am on the Santa mug. I picked this up after I finished the um, Mary Minty and finished his face. I have a few squishy stitches here. I actually got off a half a row, but um, I was not gonna pick it all out after I had done all that face. And so he has a half stitch row above his eyebrows and you can't tell, it's fine. I really like the way this is turning out. I have the, um, in fact, here's my thread just hanging. I have the little evergreen border around the side and the holly berries. I might do Smyrna crosses on those holly berries. And then um, his handle. I couldn't find my red, which um, I have since found. This is the um, brightest version of my Aunt Ruth red that hardly has any dye on it at all. I've used most of this. This was Santa from uh, the Brenda Gervais Sal. And then this thread keep is a Christmas gift from last year. Here's the greens. I used the 935, 34, 36. I'm kind of interspersing that I didn't end up using this variegated one. It was just too bright. So I really like the way that's turning out. And I'm going to use this fabric for another project. I'm not sure if I'm going to show you that this time or next time. But I really like, like the way that is turning out. And the last thing I worked on was my favorite thing I've stitched in a really long time. This Holly Berry Farm by Stacy Nash. I just love Stacy Nash. I don't feel like she can do wrong. <laughs> and um, this house is behemoth. You can see the stitches there. I've kind of got my light coming and going. So <laughs> when I turned the overhead chandelier on, it kind of blew everything out, but now I'm kind of shadowed. This white silk is just a joy to stitch. I showed you last time how I felt like it was a lot fluffier, here it is in the middle, than the DMC equivalent, and it's just so smooth and nice. And then I've got the holly berries. I think I have one more leaf up here, and that's the end of that border. Using my Aunt Ruth red again for the Mary and the berries. And then um, I'm using Victorian mottos for the, I guess that's the foundation and the peaks of the windows or a week's just kind of using my own colors I haven't I don't think used anything called for except for those windows those are espresso bean and that's I think the only called for that I'm using which is kind of random and strange but <laughs> I do like the way it's it's really gonna show up and my goal hopefully um I've had a little bit of a tinge in my back I posted on Instagram so I need to talk quick so I can get back to my heating pad but my goal is to just stitch away on this house and then I'll put it up for this year and hopefully have it um, 
as a focus next year. So that's been kind of fun to open up my Christmas box. I'll show you the new one that I got and just um, get started again on something that's almost done and then you feel such gratification. So I'm fine. A lot of um, other floss tubers have said it's fine to, you know, put the season away and just be ready for next year to start on it again. So no pressure if it doesn't get done. But those are the whips that I worked on. Next, I want to show you the haul that I picked up, which includes some enormous stitchy kindness and some plans. So hang on just a second. I wanted to let you know that I will be giving away one of my Bell Snickel Santas that I shared in my last video. These were so much fun to make with wool from a sheep that I got on Etsy from a shepherd and muslin that I painted and kind of sculpted that face and used some chenille that I hand dyed. So lots of different processes with it, but not difficult. I had linked the pattern in my last video if you're interested in making one or maybe picking it up for next year to make. It was so much fun and I'll probably be making more. Um, this is a gift to my subscribers though. Thank you so much for responding quickly and um, bumping me over the 4,000, quite a bit more now, um, right? So I will, like I said, be giving this away. And um, because it's handmade and our mail has been so squirrely, I'm going to um, be giving this domestically only for now. So US only. I intend to do a giveaway for my next giveaway that I can do with um, a PDF. So it will be international, but this one is domestic only. And you have to be over 18 for me to receive your address. And please don't say giveaway in your uh, comment, but do say Santa, just S-A-N-T-A, -A, not Santa's. Not apostrophe yes. I'm going to search for the word Santa. So if you will um, comment below with Santa in one week's time, my intention, <laughs> cross fingers, next Tuesday, I'm going to come back hopefully with a few completed little projects and also just to announce the winner. It will get to hopefully by Christmas, but um, it'll mostly be for next year. So I another reason why they wanted to pop on today is to uh, announce that 4,000 subscriber giveaway and to thank you for your support and kindness. I know I was emotional in my last video because of our sad news and y'all were so kind and friendly to encourage me and to um, just let me know that it's okay to be real and to um, share that part of my life. So I appreciate your continued prayers. We are doing better and and just taking it day by day. We have some new opportunities ahead for Emma. So feeling a little more encouraged that it's gonna be okay. It's just been a blow for us to have to cancel the wedding that was planned. So thank you though for your kindness and your words of support with that. I also had some other kindness, nice segue, that I wanted to share from sweet friends. Um, Daylene painted a beautiful watercolor. She's done several. You're very talented, Daylene. I love this. Thank you so much for your kindness and sending that my way. Also, Miss Jenny, she has sent out so many of these. Thank you, Jenny. The long dog stitcher is so talented and so sweet. I really wish I could have met you in Alabama, Jenny, last January, but very soon. Hopefully, we will be able to meet at a retreat. This um, came from my friend Trinka who was just encouraging me and um, praying for me and sent me a little 2020 charm, which I think I'm going to sew onto my little Mary Minty um, piece. So thank you, Trinka. I appreciate that very much. And then the last um, Stitchy Kindness also segues into my haul and is just an amazing um, gift from my friend Michelle to our guild. Cozy Egg Designs, the Legacy Collection. It's her first reproduction. She works so hard reproducing this um, Sarah and Banton 1833. I had hoped to show you my fabric from 123 that I've ordered for it. I'm actually using some Legacy Linen in a 38 count. I don't love 40. 36 is a little bit light with some of the colors. So I'm really excited to try a 38 count. And this will be our start on January 1st. Um, I'll put the hashtag here. I can't remember what it is, Michelle. But um, we will all be stitching together the 
guild members that are participating. And um, just so thankful for my friendship to you, Michelle, and your kindness. We spent a lot of time together this year, and it's been very, very much appreciated. Getting emotional again. <laughs> um, thank you, Michelle. The other thing um, that I picked up, there were a lot of Good Friday sales. I guess I hadn't really thought about um, cross-stitch sales on Good Friday. I'm usually buying Christmas stuff, but I picked up a few things because... Um, I have plans for next year with some snow stuff. This is the Liberty Creek Primitives. And these snowmen are so cute. I actually have one of these. They're called cheese boxes. I didn't know that. I've had one for years. So I thought, oh, I can do that. Right now it's just holding, it's kind of back in that cabinet, just holding some greenery. So I'm excited to put this in there. And I'll probably use a battery operated one. The directions tell you how to drill a hole and put a cord, but I'm gonna use a battery. And that's some kind of batting, like, um, well, I'm not a quilter, so it's not as easy to my memory, but it looks really fun and easy. So that will be a plan coming up. I also picked up some ornaments from my friend, Marissa. I have some talented friends. She is designing on Etsy. I wanted to point out some of these things. I, I also got some housewife stuff, but a lot of y'all have seen that. Um, these are kind of some unsung designers that you may not have heard of. Um, Marissa from M Kissa Creations is hosting the Stitch Lilies on Sunday sale, which I hope to get back to in January, Marissa. In fact, I'll be sharing my plans probably at the end of December when I do a finish parade. I think I have, if you count my little soft finishes, probably about 30 finishes that I want to show. Um, and then I will get back to the lilies in January, but Marissa and I are hosting that sale together and she's from Maine. She was a friend of Helen um, D's is how we met. And I love VWs. My first car was a VW bug. It was my pride and joy. It ended up catching fire, but anyways, and flooding. I filled it with water as well. But this VW van um, is stitched, so it's safe from my, <laughs> um, bad luck and my uncle had an orange one that he drove to all of our family reunions that looked like a giant pumpkin so i can't wait to stitch that one probably next year but i don't know i might have time it's very small it's only 40 by 50 so i hope to have this one done and then um i also got the santa claus one that i haven't shown the littles yet but that may be under the tree for them and then this one i saw Susie reno mention it too i bought it um or i've had it on my wish list for a long time this uh good flora Stitch Wart has such an artistic, tiny little stitches over one, over one clothes and these Quaker snowflakes. I, I might just do this as a winter piece, even though it's got Santa's um, Sire Christmas. She's from the UK. Actually, she's from uh, Scotland. I saw on her Etsy when I was looking this up a while ago, she's from Edinburgh. So very good designer, very talented. If you have not seen her things, I will link that below. And uh, Abby Topknot Stitcher, I haven't ever shopped with her before. I have a lot of mutual friends, but uh, she was running a very generous sale. I did pick up this Sweet Land of Liberty book that I've wanted for a long time. I saw you had just gotten it too, Celeste. If you want to stitch something out of it, let me know when and and what. We'll do a little sale. But um, I'm excited to have that one. The Winds of Autumn one is so tempting to me, but it's not going anywhere. And I won't be stitching it till autumn, so I restrained myself. And it's it's. I can't wait to see what's in it. It looks really good. I also picked up a little needle minder. I am losing so many needles lately, just flying out of my hand. I don't know. So this one is a little Valentine one, little cupids. I have a little Valentine bag and some Valentine projects that I might share soon. So this was going to be part of that. And I also picked up this black and white tin from Hobby Lobby. I know Liz had shown this. Isn't that so cute? And the idea was perfect. I tried to find a tin like this for the um, word plays by Brenda Gervais. And the idea is just to store them in here and switch them out, which is genius. I think, uh, Priscilla actually came up with that, but Liz was smart to jump on, and I am too. But my plan with that is it's a carrot. If I finish my prairie seasons, I have had these little prairie schooler, uh, summer, winter, spring, fall in my work uh, basket for a long time. If I finish those, 
I will start to purchase the word plays. I'm going to finish out the year with the Prairie Seasons, but apparently I only have enough mental space to finish one seasonal series at a time. So I think I was just taking on too much. I have my L Little House Needleworks series all done. Now the Prairie Schooler is already kitted, already started. So I'm going to hold off on those word plays, but I did pick that 10 up because I didn't want it to be out of stock. Um, and the last thing I got was just a pretty box. I really like this kind of capsule that I've been doing with the, um, isn't that pretty? With the seasonal stitching, basically just putting it all away. There's a house size one on top that I didn't get to, but putting it all away at the end of the season. And I have a stack of them in the corner of my craft room now. And as the year goes on, I'll be adding to it here and there, but mostly just um, working from what I have. I don't intend to do a ton of new starts next year. I intend to really focus on my 2018 mania, which was an insane amount of starts and um, evaluate a couple I will UFO. They just aren't in my taste um, wheelhouse anymore and I'm gonna let those go, but the rest I intend to really buckle down and try to finish. So we'll see how that goes. I don't want it to be a pressure kind of situation either, but I'm definitely not buying more patterns until I finish some of the ones I have. So that's the plan. And again, thank you for watching and for being a friend to me. Um, I just find you such a valuable part of my life and such an enrichment with your comments and your encouragement and your friendship. So I hope that you have a Merry Christmas with your family. I will insert a few pictures at the end here of my Santa table and some video I took of my tree and my mantle. I haven't done as much with the house this year. It's been a little bit of a more mellow mood, so we haven't um, really been in the spirit that way, but we do have um, some pretty things that um, we've put out and I've had some fun decorating with the Santas and the things that I've made this year. So thank you again for watching and as I end all of my videos in Psalm 90 verse 17 it says, may the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. Have a good rest of December. I'm going to insert a quick recommendation of some videos I've enjoyed that you may not have caught. The sampler girl Tanya has done Vlogmas, I think two or three years in a row. And I have, I don't know where I've been. I've just missed those vlogs. I've enjoyed so much the last day following Tanya along through the month of December with just beautiful music and book recommendations. And her home is so welcoming and she um, focuses on her or features her grandma a lot of times. And I just, I really like Tanya's videos. So I'm gonna link those below. Also, Michelle Loves You GB, a lot of you are watching, I'm sure. She is giving so many free charts out there that are so worthy to be focused or, or to be highlighted. So if you want to see more free charts, a lot of the same ones that I've been focusing on but or showcasing, but also some new ones from the UK that I'm not familiar with, um, I will link Michelle below and also Brenda, uh, the sampler stitcher. I'm sure y'all have already seen her beautiful home tour, but it was so inspiring to see the samplers, just the um, timeless classic sort of stitching that you'll be proud of for decades to come. So I recommend those floss tubes below and I will link them. Thanks.